Hey YouTube, it's the test lead, and today's video is the waterfall methodology simplified. One of the most important decisions a team must make is what methodology will they choose to follow for the release of their application. The methodology will dictate the flow and mindset that the team will follow from the conception of the idea until after the final product is released to the end user. Today's methodology is the waterfall model. This video will cover the different phases of the waterfall model, as well as the pros and cons. The phases of the waterfall model. The waterfall model is the most traditional methodology. It consists of different phases, and for each phase, there's a goal. The phases are requirements, design, implementation, verification, and maintenance. Each phase relies on deliverables from the previous phase, so you can't move on to the next phase until the previous phase is complete. So to help illustrate the idea, we will compare it to working in a bakery. So first, the requirements phase. So we know we want to bake something, but what will we bake and why? First, you want to start with the high level scope of the project, and that way you and everyone else involved know what's going on. For this, we are choosing to bake a cake. But how will we know what's going in the cake? We get the requirements from the customer. In the actual world, the customer will be the stakeholder, product owner, or people who have vested interest in application development. Ask the customer to be as detailed as possible with the requirements so you know the exact measurable items to strive for when making our cake. So we get a nice list of requirements of everything the customer expects from the cake. They want it to be three layer, sugar free, red velvet, and most importantly, taste good. Personally, we have never made a sugar free cake before, so now I'm going to research people who have and get more knowledge about it. In the real world, when you have requirements that you're not too familiar with, you also should research and talk to other like stakeholders or product owners or actual users to get more information about it. That way you make sure you implement it correctly. Before wrapping up this step, we want to have a meeting with our team to clearly communicate all the information that we have gathered with our team members and stakeholders. Now that this step is fully complete, we can move on to the next step, the design phase. Next, we'll plan out and design every part of the workflow. Based on all the information that we gathered from the previous step, we're going to create a system design. The system design should include the hardware, software, and system requirements that will be needed to successfully meet our requirements. Also, in our design, we should start all steps it will take to complete our task. Delegate all the different tasks to different areas and different people, and create a timeline of when everything should be expected to be finished. Now let's design our cake so you have a better visual of what I'm talking about. We now know all the ingredients needed, so we'll create a schedule for buying the ingredients, as well as then turning the ingredients into our beautiful cake. Remember, try to be as detailed as possible in planning so there'll be less idle time spent on what we are supposed to do at a given time. Now that all the tasks are delegated and everybody knows what they're supposed to do, we can start making the cake. Implementation. During the implementation, the developers now have the requirements as well as the documents so they can start designing the code. During the implementation, the developers can start reviewing the requirements and design documents. From there, they can produce the required code needed for our application. The system should first be developed in small units, and from there, those units should be unit tested. So now back to our cake analogy, now we're mixing all the ingredients together and making something to visually see as a cake. So we have our frosting. We're gonna unit test our frosting, make sure our frosting tastes good. Any special ingredients in the batter, we make sure those in particular taste good. Let's say you wanna add fruit, Make sure each strawberry tastes good and everything is fresh. So we're going to unit test and intuition test each of the individual parts. Testing. Now that our application is finished in the development phase, we can start full testing. Before we did small testing, just unit intuition testing, which is usually done by the developer themselves. But now we're going to do full system testing. Once development is finished, we can start to test application for any bugs or problems in our code. Any bugs should be prioritized. Any bugs that require immediate fixes, once fixed, should be retested before proceeding. All the above efforts should be well documented. In the testing phase, we should do full testing. It should be functional testing and non-functional testing. I have separate videos coming for it, the different types of testing, so please stay tuned. Back to our beautiful cake. So the developer put all the different pieces of the cake together. Now we're gonna test to make sure that it visually looks how the requirements expected and it tastes good how the requirements expected. Any inconsistencies or problems that we see that don't meet the requirements should be communicated. Any problems should be reported as a bug. 
and it should be fixed as soon as possible so we can sign up and say, hey, this cake meets our requirements that the customer expected. That way we make sure you have a happy customer. Delivery and verification. In this step, we are finally making a release and deployment to our customer in a production environment. Feedback is then given to you from them to say if everything met the initial requirements. Back to our cake. So finally, we have our finished product. We're gonna give it to the customer. They're gonna tell us how it looked, if it meets their visual expectations, if it tastes good, all that stuff. We are scared at first that they might not like it, but after receiving it, they check all the requirements that they gave to us originally and express how much they love it. And now finally, the maintenance phase. Once we have released our application, we must continue to support it. It is often later down the road that bugs come up and are found that were missed during testing. This is often because there's often edge cases that testing may not account for. New features may also want to be added after release, which should be communicated with the team and then run through the software development lifecycle again. Now back to our cake. We have sold our cake, our customer loves it. The week after the customer comes back and says they love it so much that they want to continue business with us. So now we're going to maintain a relationship with this customer. They say, hey, we want more cakes, we want cupcakes and other things. So now we're going to continue to support this customer throughout the process. And now finally, the pros and cons of the waterfall concept. First, the pros. First, there are clear goals set for each phase before proceeding, which makes it a lot easier to manage. The linear design is easy for people to pick up who are new to methodologies. You commit to what the end goal is at an early stage with clear deliverables. It's easy to arrange tasks and milestones. And finally, it's easier to manage because each phase has deliverables and a review phase. And now finally the cons, because nothing's perfect. First, very low flexibility. If something wants to be added to a previous or future phase, it may have to wait to a whole new cycle. Next, it is very slow and costly. Because one phase must be completely finished before another one can start, there's no overlapping. That means that some people may be idle at different parts of the cycle. Maybe the testing team is waiting for the development team to still finish their development. So if they had nothing else to do, they're sitting out idle, but you're still paying for them. So that can be very costly down the road. Overall, this model is not as common as it once was. Testing does not start until development is fully finished. And finally, working software is not produced until later on in the process. I will be covering other methodologies soon, so please stay tuned. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want another video just like this, please take care. And hey, don't forget to learn something new today.